just out here cutting off wood, minding my own business, and Okay, this is Whispering Lake. Guys, welcome back. I'm glad to have you guys back. And look at this. Oh, and look at that there. That's a uh, snow sled. <laughs> guys, we're in Wisconsin. And we are at the, I don't know if I'm pronouncing this right, we're in a national forest. And it's called Chatiqua. Nicolette, Ottawa National Forest. Don't quote me on that, I'm pretty sure it's right. Yeah, and guess what, we're doing an overnighter. <laughs> and look at this, got snowshoes on too. They at least have at least a foot of snow here right now, so yeah, this is pretty awesome. So I'm a little bit out of my territory. It's a lot different up here, about eight, nine hours from home. So me and Angel are basically on vacation for a week, eight days, and she suggested I do an overnighter up here. And uh, I was like, okay. <laughs> so I didn't say no to that one. And uh, she just, she actually just dropped me off. But she's gonna pick me up tomorrow between nine and 10. Yeah, so we're in the, we're in the Chatico and Nicolette Auto National Forest, and we are doing an overnighter. And there's black bear out here, there's timber wolves, there's elk, moose, stuff like that. Probably won't see any, but I'm a little bit nervous. But anyways, we're using my cold weather survival pack. Um, it's not my extreme cold weather survival pack, it's my cold weather survival pack, because it's kind of geared towards where I'm at, but I'm using it up here. And so throughout the video, we'll be going over that and we'll be enjoying this beautiful forest. So let's get on with the show. And I haven't done a video yet, but this is kind of my extreme cold weather survival sled that I'm putting together. But uh, yeah, you see it's all packed full of snow at the moment. I made this with a friend of mine when I was like 15 or 16 years old. Actually, I think I was 15 or 14 or 14 or 15 years old. But yeah, we're, <laughs> we're in we're in an awesome forest. We don't have forests like this in Illinois. We got spruce, we got birch, aspen. Man, this is gonna be awesome, guys. Ah, uh, it's really nice. Someone's already broke trail out here. Well, <laughs> to this point right here. Okay. I think I can see where it keeps going though. That's all right. Oh yeah. We got a deep end. <laughs> It's at least a foot deep. This place here is what you call dispersed camping. And basically, there's a limited amount of rules. You camp wherever you want, 100 feet from a trail, 100 feet from water, cut down dead dead wood. Um, I don't know if standing dead wood, but I know dead wood around you, you can cut up because I called them an ass. And just basically leave no trace. So 
Yeah, that's what's so awesome about this place. Oh man, look at that. So basically that's what we're doing. We're looking for a campsite. Not sure how far we're gonna go into this place, but uh, I can see where a trail is, so. I have a map with me. We'll look at that here in a little bit, but just general direction of where to go. There's lakes out here, there's springs, and there's swamps, so. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention, I'm sporting the uh, military, whoa, about fell there, military uh, Denali snowshoes. There's a nice little upper survival shelter already made for you. Just hunker right on down in there. It's a big old tree. Oh, down there, I don't know if you guys can see it. Let's go over here. Whoa, gotta be careful for a walk here. But down there is the a creek. Basically it's trail. Well, what there is of a trail, you can see it. We're gonna try to get to a lake or a bluff. Uh, Taught you guy at one of the stores around here. So it's really pretty in that area. So I'm just trying to get too carried away. At least I'll be able to uh, see my track out. We're not supposed to have any snow tonight, which if I did have snow, and here's a survival situation for you. If you think that you can backtrack, I'm sure my voice changed. I'm in teacher mode. No I'm kidding. But if you think that you can backtrack your snowshoe trail or your pull sled trail or pull sled trail, which is what we have using your survival sled and you don't know if it's gonna be weather the next day like a foot of snow think again because if you have a lot of snow come that night you're not gonna see your trail it's gonna be completely covered and then you're lost so you can't just rely on that soak it in guys <laughs> we're in the real outdoors Well, that's a lake right there where we're at right now. I think it's dried up. We're on a, we're on a ridge line pretty much. So I think a little farther up is the other lake in the bluffs. But yeah. <sighs> Snowshoeing is a workout. I haven't done this since I was a kid, really. So, whew. <laughs> Natural survival shelter. There's a big tree there. <laughs> We're not gonna stay there tonight though. The, this is a workout. Man. I was like a kid in a candy store right now. Okay, check it out. There's the lake out there. This is a workout. Yeah, I'm going downhill. And what's great about this sled is I have poles here. So the sled won't they won't hit my legs. So it's pretty it's it's been very helpful. Because it's pretty hilly out here. Oh man. Oh except, oh, except when that happens. You gotta I could turn around here the best I can. But I could undo my belt, but I could just push that back without breaking my poles. There we go. Whoa, whoa, whoa. That about fell there. Not either. Okay. Yeah, that didn't work out too well. 
Oh, I'm just gonna grab on my backpack. I gotta take this off. Okay. Back. Grab on my back there. Okay. I think this is whispering late. But that's beautiful out there. We're gonna keep going this way. I think I'm gonna find a camp spot. Somewhere up there on the hill. Okay, I think I got a little camp right here. This is what I'm gonna do. Got the setup right here. We're up on the bluff. There's the lake out there. There's the hill I just climbed my sled. Um, but what we do, got a post live view with me to cover my gear up. And we'll clean this off and we'll run my post live view over that. And I'll be using a Chrysalis bivy and a sleep bag. And then I'm gonna get rid of this pine here. And then I'm gonna, oh, come on. First, I'm gonna clean all the snow out. Actually, no, I'm gonna cut the cut that up and I'm gonna clean my snow out. And then uh, we'll have our fire right here. So now I gotta get to do some more work now. Okay, I'll just go ahead and start my cold weather survival pack video now. Now this here is the MSR Dinelli military snowshoe. This is not part of my cold weather survival pack, which is what I have with us today. Uh, because I wouldn't need, necessarily need snowshoes, it's kind of a luxury, but I, it really helps out to have it. Now this would go with my extreme cold weather survival pack, which I haven't built yet. However, I didn't bring a shovel, but what I can do is I can use this as a shovel to clean me out a spot over here. Let's get the snow off of here. Gonna check out the survival pack. We're gonna base, base, base. We're gonna go through the whole thing throughout the video, but all right. The so Polish Labu we're gonna use for a shelter. Okay, real quick. So still getting camp set up. This is the snug pack. Uh, I forgot the name of it. Anyways, it's a snug pack pack, and I have my SSO Spazin food pouch. Uh, I think this is SSO, no, it's a different brand. Can't remember the name of it, but that's my canteen set. This is my shelter system in here, which is, I'm using the Chrysalis Bivy. This is my first aid kit right here. And this here is another shelter system for a later video. It's a backup shelter for to stay warm in. It's, uh, well, we're gonna do a video on that too. Extra fire stuff in there, paracord, compass, those things. Got my silky out back, and then here I don't like to carry axes, so I thought of this would be good for a cold weather pack because I can really baton some bigger logs with this. And in a cold weather, you need a nice warm fire. So, this and my saw for a cold weather survival pack, not extreme cold weather survival pack. Works perfect. 
together. All right. Oh, and a sleeping pad on the bottom. But we need to get that wood cut up because we're losing daylight. Pretty much gets dark around 4.30. It's probably two o'clock, so I didn't get started out here until almost 12 o'clock when Angel dropped me off. So uh, not much time to get stuff going. We'll go over the pack as we go along. Perfecto. Silky all the way. Basically, basically, I'm getting the limbs off for the lavu, the Polish lavu, so I don't poke holes in it. So I'm just using a paracord going through the butthole on this lavu. Just tying around this log right here. Nothing fancy, just enough to keep it up. Just give me some cover in the back. It'll make it'll, it will help me sleep a little better. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I'm just not used to sleeping in the forest with black bear and wolves or timber wolves. But they said I'll probably never see one, so I hope that's the case. Alright, so the back will be the back will be pretty easy to do. I'll just uh if I gotta put any kind of anchor out, I'll just throw snow over it. And that will hold it down. I'll lift that up. Get all this brought up here. And there you go. That easy. So that just gives me a little bit, a little bit of a backing. I just feel a little safer from behind me. <laughs> I'm gonna fix this side though. I am running out of time, I believe. Oh, it's only 1:44. Okay, we're doing pretty good. We got about two and a half hours before it gets dark, so <laughs> I got plenty of time. Okay, so. Along with the cold weather survival pack. As we open the top here, I have two smoke grenades and that's for signal signaling. This on top here is just one of my down jackets to hold my, um, my camera stuff in because batteries don't like cold weather. Oh, and by the way, it's supposed to be a high of 37 today and a low of 32. But Angel looked at the forecast and it says a low of 25 or 28. So I know she said 25 or 24. I don't know. It was in the low 20s, but we'll find out tonight. Okay. So this me dispersed camping, having water and everything. Being a survival pack as well, I carry a water purif purifier with me. But we don't even need this today because I have all the water around me okay also for my cold weather pack i have a primus omni fuel stove which we will be making some coffee some bush coffee with that or as you want to call it winter bush coffee that'll be for the morning and the and the, and the idea behind that was it's a it's a four season stove and if i just want to get a quick something in my stomach you know boil some water real quick and get on the move because in cold weather you know, if you're in a situation where you're hypothermic, 
it's going to be a pain in the butt trying to get a fire going and get stuff going. So that there would be what I'd use first before trying to get a big fire going. Unless I had the proper stuff, which I do have. But it's just kind of a redundancy, I guess. Okay. Paper towel, basically for this trip. And then my, we're going to use the Dark Star Zero Degree Sleeping Bag. And I'm only with one hand now, so I'll pull that out. <laughs> but uh, I picked the Dark Star for this pack because all my other packs are a little heavier. And this was pretty light. And it's, a, it's rated to zero degrees Fahrenheit. So that's pretty good for cold weather survival. Like I said, this is an extreme cold weather pack. So uh, that's why I picked that one. So I'm going to get camp set up. Oh, yeah. And then in here... In, this is a USGI waist pack, or yeah, a waist pack you wear around your waist, which has got my integral designs bivy sack. And another reason why I picked a bivy sack versus my freedom shelter, freedom shelter was my original idea. However, being cold weather and stuff, you know, like I said, I was in a situation where I just needed to get shelter set up fast. Well, that's that bivy sack doesn't require anything but take it out of the bag and get in it real simple it's windproof waterproof and it doesn't require any kind of work to get it set up so that'd be a real fast option for getting set up and then if i got time i can set stuff up around it like we did here okay so here we go i'm gonna finish getting camp set up and then we're gonna go on to the firewood hopefully <laughs> i have the plastic down of course in the lavu but i have the usgi thermarest sleeping pad and i picked orange um webbing Just for like signaling or something if i need to signal or mark anything you never know so that's my sleeping mattress and i just wanted to mention something here this is my cold my extreme cold weather sled that i would use like it's not extreme cold weather but it, this up here does get extreme cold weather it will be in a month or so but this is more of a narrow than a wide deep like polk sled it's not as narrow, it's more shallow. I mean, it's not as deep and short. It's more narrow and long. It's still pretty, it's deep enough. But I like this. I didn't like it at first. When I, I got this when I was a kid. When I was a kid, I wanted the, the short, deep ones. But that's what I got was that. But I like it better because it's longer. And if you need to make shelter with it, you can sleep under it. You can sleep in it. It's something to sit in. And it's just, it's, it's the full length of me. So... It's got, I think it's got a little bit more of a use for it, so. And, I just, and then here I just got some Titan paracord. It's the survival paracord wrapped around the PVC piping there. And uh, so yeah. Anyways, I'm gonna get on with the video, sorry. <laughs> I went, we went down a rabbit trail there, guys. <laughs> So basically what I'm doing right now is I got another log cut for my base. And I'm just, I'm looking for spruce is what I want. We got, oh man, we got, like right there, got all those dead spruce branches on the bottom. And uh, I've never been able to burn spruce, so this is going to be pretty cool. So I'm going to get some more cut up and I'll get back to you guys. Yeah, I'll just put my silky saw in the snow. <laughs> it's almost the length of a handle, so. Uh, Pretty much a little over a foot of snow. Check out this uh, yellow birch here. We'll get some tinder off of this here. Oh, it's dead. But that's a good fire starter there. And hopefully I'll find some more old, man, old man's beard. So I'll get back with you. Here's the lake. So pretty out there. Uh, okay, <laughs> I'm cutting up wood here. 
and my silky saw came back and got me right in the leg. You can see through my my nice Gorka. This is actually a Gorka C outfit that I'm wearing. It went right through my uh oh I gotta look at it guys. Hold on. I can't tell what I did. It don't feel too bad. If I rub my knee and it felt real slimy, so I don't know if I'm bleeding. Oh, it's not too bad. There's where it got me. That went right through my pants. That's from the Silky Outback right there. <laughs> Look at that thing. Oh my gosh. It's not too bad, guys. Oh. Oh man, it got me good though. I felt it too. Just out here cutting off wood, minding my own business, and that silky is sharp. Oh my gosh. I'm more upset that it went it hit my corka pants. Those are not cheap. Oh, there's a highlight of the strip so far. Okay, I'll get back to you guys. I'm a big baby, I know. We're pretty much set up. We got birch bark, starter fire. That is all spruce. There's a little bit of pine, but mainly spruce. So we're gonna burn some spruce, more spruce, and uh, some more birch bark. And then I believe this is also spruce that I just cut up. I cut myself, dude. I'm gonna sit down, we're gonna have some hot cocoa, and uh, we'll get this fire going when it starts to get a little darker out. So it's time for a break, guys. I've been going since I've been here, so about three hours straight. But uh, I'll get back here, this is what we got accomplished. In that amount of time, all of our firewood, shelter set up, so. All right, guys. Time to break out the stove now.